thank you and welcome everyone. I will speak about the B2 Safe integration with uh, digital repositories uh, and specifically about the integration with uh, one specific digital repository called eSpace. Uh, I will start by answering basic questions like uh, why we need backups and what kind of backups we need. And uh, then also uh, what to do when there is a problem and how to restore and deal with disaster recovery. And these issues will be addressed from a digital library point of view. So, so let's start. Uh, we need external backups. We really do. If you see the picture on the right side, that's a broken fan. And I will tell you a short story. Some time ago, a fan cooling, uh, one of our server rooms froze. It was winter and it froze. Uh, I really hope that the, actually that fan uh, doesn't look like the fan on the picture. But uh, nevertheless, um, the server rooms during winter had summer. And as it happens, um, they broke a lot of hardware and, and so on. So um, what happens was that uh, problems do not come alone. They come in, in groups. And uh, make the long story short, uh, there was a RAID 7 disk that got corrupted. We have our own life replicas, which got also corrupted. We have operating system-based backups that were gone because of the replica corruption. We had also seven days backups, which got corrupted as well. That's because of another problem. Um, and we were not sure that we, could, uh, we, we managed to save them. Uh, but we were calm because we had our external virtual machine replica at our national science e-infrastructure. But as I told you, the problems do not come alone. And there was a minor bug in the replication service. And when the size limit of that storage was exceeded, it started to write the bits from the beginning, safely destroying all the backups. However, we were still calm because most of our data were replicated in a digital library friendly way at B2Save. So at the end of the day, we used uh, the, the seven day backups because we managed to restore them pretty soon. But if not, we would then go with the B2Save uh, storage. So one more time, the moral of the story is that we really need external backups that play nice with the service they backup. Uh, so now the question is what to what to really back up? Is it the disk itself or the virtual machine or something application friendly? And then when the problem is how to restore it, and also you should ask the question whether a restoring to another infrastructure is possible or not. So what to back up? Because we are mostly uh, storing uh, data from a digital library, um, there is an ISO standard called OAIS reference model for archival systems that we, we, we use for um, defining the backup and replication policies. We chose the archival information package to be the format of our replicated data. In other words, we do not separately send individual files metadata or provenance information, but we send them in an AIP packages. The, the advantage of this is that these packages can be then easily imported to any DSpace instance. Uh, the AIP packages in these cases are then in place of the submission information packages or the dissemination information packages. They are uh, they, they are one file, which is a compressed uh, version of, of, of several files. It's actually a zip format, and uh, that's dependent on the DSpace implementation. So now about our case study about the DSpace repository. We are, um, we are uh, having a, we, we have a Lindat DSpace uh, repository, which we are developing actively. Uh, that's, a, that's a changed version of the upstream DSpace version 5.4, but also that version is supported. So the B2Safe is integrated into the web interface, 
but then also does all the thing in the backend. Basically, it listens for changes to a file or to, uh, to an item, for example, when it firstly gets uh, approved and then it triggers the replication service. So how does it look like? Uh, the D space has something called a control panel, which can be used for getting information and also uh, into changing some of the configuration. And we added one tab there, which uh, is called the IRS replication. Probably not, not the best name at the moment, but uh, you can find it there. You can turn on the replication. And uh, this is the first tab. Uh, this is the first tab which shows the, the configuration, like where is the directory where it should be replicated and the versions of the server and so on. The second more important tab are the listing of the replicas which are already there, saying what is the status of them, like whether the archiving procedure, the replication went okay, what's their PID, what's their metadata, the size, and uh, some more information about uh, the actual replication, either process or then the, the files. You can also delete them, that depends on the policy. Yeah, the third tab are the missing replicas, which means that there can be uh, files uh, which haven't been replicated, for example, because you enable this feature on a, on a live instance of DSpace. And then you can replicate, uh, you can turn on the replicate all daemon, which silently in the background with a low priority goes one by one for each of the item, creates the, the replica and then sends it to the server. I will speak about the workflow also later. But this is how it looks like from the graphical user interface point of view in, in DSpace. Uh, this is the Lin.D space version, not the default DSpace. It would uh, be less shiny in the DSpace version. So what are the main points in the integration? It's easy to set up. You only fill out the configuration, turn it on, and it's transparent for also the users and also the admins, which means that it's uh, doing the replication without any manual interaction. The uh, crucial thing is that because we have no agreement between our um, institute and uh, the b 2 safe backend, only the public records are replicated at the moment. That can be easily changed, but for us, this is the case. And uh, the real advantage is that the files on the b 2 safe backend can be ingested by any DSpace repository. So when we decide that we want to move all of our um, all of our items to another repository, this is one way how to do it. Just to give the credentials to another repository and it can ingest them easily. And now about the architecture. So from the architectural point of view, there are two packages. One of them is the core, which we call the B2Safe repository package. It's managed by uh, UDAT is based on our implementation of the core one. It's uh, available on GitHub. And the core package uh, does not contain any repository specific code. The idea was that there will be a lot of connectors for specific repositories that will connect to this library, which will be the generic library for IROTS or another protocol replication because IROS is not the only one, but at the moment it's on the only one supported. And it's supported via the Jargon library, which is the implementation of the IROS protocol in Java. The available features in this, in this package are you can replicate an item or a file to be precise, whatever you call a file. You can list them, you can delete them, but it depends also on the policy. EU that assigns persistent identifiers, so deleting might not be um, might not be according to their policies. You can retrieve the files, including the metadata, search, add and modify the, the metadata. So this is the core package, uh, which does not contain any repository specific code. 
And then one of the connectors, I think at the moment is the only one, that's the DSpace connector, uh, which is also available on GitHub under the LRB to save DSpace name. It does not need to know about the iRods. At the moment, it slightly knows it tunes some of the configuration uh, parameters for the core package, but um, it's uh, just because we found that it's it's much faster when we change some of the configuration. But otherwise, it does not know how the replication and what kind of replication is being done. It only knows that uh, it's connected to B2Safe and that will be responsible for the replication. The available features at the moment are validation of checksum. So I will send the file there and I want to know whether the file at the back end of B2Save is the same that I send there. So one way how to do this, how to validate this is to check the MD5 checksums. That's uh, what we support. We support also replicating all the missing items in a low priority background thread which is very handful when you have a, a live instance where you turn on this feature. And also uh, our policy is that each change triggers the replication that might be or might not the, be um, uh, the, the, the way how other repositories uh, want to work with this B2Save. Because when you have a, a one terabyte big file and you just change the metadata, you have to create the one terabyte plus all the metadata file and send it there. But this is at the moment the feature uh, which we are using. So what's the workflow uh, in our digital repository? A user comes to our repository, he creates a submission and uh, he wants to archive it. So one of our editor gets it and he has to approve it. When he approves that, a PID will be generated and the record is published. But in parallel, a replication thread is started, which creates a local AIP package on the local, uh, on, on the server side, on our, our server side. So one zipped file of all the contents, which is the metadata, all the content, uh, bit streams, and all, also the authorizations and, and policies related to that item. This AIP package is then sent through the core library, the B2Safe repository package, and is being replicated. This at the moment triggers an IROTS copy command. And uh, when this finishes, then we get a list of metadata, including whether it was okay, whether the replication found any problems, and uh, all the needed and necessary information. We also add additional information from our side, like the MD5 checksums from our server, so we can also compare it to the one computed by, uh, by UDAT. When the transfer ends, uh, as I already mentioned, the MD5 checksums are verified and the local AIP package uh, is removed. So what are the future plans? At the moment, uh, we replicate only items. But in our digital repository, the DSpace, you have also the notion of collections and communities and site. We are not replicating these. So even though you are able to uh, restore items, you are not able to restore the hierarchy uh, of that. So this is one of the objects we would like to work on, one of the goals. We would also like to automate the repetitive task of of item validation against the, the B2Safe replica. Because this is uh, done only once at the moment. And then in the metadata, you have the MD5 checksums, which you can also easily check, but um, those are only metadata, so to, to, those are static. So we would like to have this in a more dynamic way and also as a repetitive task. We do not at the moment support a one-click restore. You have to download the file from B2Safe server manually or using the core library and then execute one DSpace command to ingest it. 
but it's not a one button click functionality. So we would like to change that. And we also would like to work on the documentation uh, because there are these command line utilities, which might be very helpful for, for uh, the administrators. So thank you, that, that's it.